this is my university, the university I attended for my master's, but I use the term attended bit loosely because I only went here for one semester <laughs> and then everything else was online thanks to COVID. Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and today's video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, it's hopefully going to be the first video of a series on my channel where we do a discussion about a book and then also travel around a bit. So today it's going to be in Bern, which is the capital of Switzerland. can't remember what I was saying. <laughs> so today's video is going to be talking about The Stoner, which is a novel by John Williams. And I thought it would be an appropriate place to sit here in front of the university as this novel is considered an academic novel or a campus novel. Hello from Voice Over Rachel. I'm just going to be jumping in here every now and again to talk about some Swiss facts as we walk around. So let's start with an overview of Switzerland. Switzerland is a small Central European country that is landlocked. As you can see on this map, it's surrounded by Germany, France, Italy, Liechtenstein, and Austria. Uh, Switzerland has four national languages, German, French, Italian, and Romanche. So you are constantly surrounded by different official Swiss languages, and of course, many other languages, including English. Albert Einstein's formula E equals MC squared was developed while living in Bern, which is a fun fact. The city of Bern is located within the canton of Bern and it is German speaking. Uh, the river R, which we're walking along here, is a beautiful place to walk. You can walk, bike, or even swim for miles, kilometers even. <laughs> uh, in the summer, you'll see the river full of people floating and even in winter, you'll see a few brave people going for a freezing cold swim. It's a great place for picnicking and letting your dogs play. As you can see, we had a lot of doggy playdates to meet along the way. Here's Luna waiting patiently for her shot, and off she goes. <laughs> the novel Stoner follows the character William Stoner, hence the name Stoner of the novel, nothing to do with weed, from Missouri. He's born to the family of farmers, and growing up, he helped his father tend the fields and raise crops and this sort of thing and one day a man from the university comes into town and tells the farmers that the future of agriculture is in science and so his parents decide to save up money and send Stoner to university. Um, however, when he gets there, he takes a class in literary studies and discovers that he has a huge passion for literature, um, which I loved. He decides to change his major from agriculture to English literature, which is very risky. <laughs> but he just really finds his passion in it. He works through school and attends classes and does his homework in the loft of the, the home that he's staying at. And during his time at university, World War I breaks out and you see this huge change in the university where young men 18 year old boys essentially are being drafted and going into war and you see this change in dynamic. Stoner has two really good friends, they're kind of a trio friend group and two of them do go to war and it forever changes the dynamics of their relationship as Stoner stays behind and continues to be a student. Uh, he really has found his passion in academia and is able to avoid <laughs> Depends, I guess, which, which stance you're on. He's able to avoid going to war to others. They see him as a bit of a coward for deciding to stay at the university. Um, and then later on, World War II breaks out while he's a professor now. And again, he stays at the university and does not enter the war. And so you continue to see this dynamic of kind of elitism uh, in academia and also what it means for... Uh, the world, I guess, and what's really valuable when people are losing their lives. So there's a really interesting discussion of academia and working class and warfare and what that means for higher education and what is important during times of war. Um, so that it's quite interesting, some of the professors in the novel, how they discuss 
the men who do end up going to war, it's not necessarily a prideful thing for them. It is really a sense of loss seeing these young men who are going off to war. And when they come back, if they come back, they are just not the same. And Leaving the river, we climbed up the hill to the Rosengarten or Rose Garden. It is a little bit of a walk. <laughs> it's a bit, a bit steep, uh, but there is a wonderful view of the city from there. Um, of course, I had to record this bee in the flower. I thought I was a videographer or something, I'm not sure. You can see this beautiful view of the city center. You can see the steeple of the Cathedral of Bern there in the center, and on the right, the river that we were walking along previously. Then walking back down the hill into the city, we make a quick stop to visit the bears. Legend had it has it that the founder of the city of Bern vowed to name the city after the first animal he met on the hunt, which happened to be a bear. Luna finally found a good spot to go for a swim, and she jumped right in. Can walk up and down the stairs to view the bears, otherwise there's this little gondola that can take you up and down quickly to view them. Can form your own opinions on uh, bears living in captivity, but they do have a little spot to swim here, which is nice. I read this novel during the height of the lockdowns and I think maybe that's why I enjoyed it so much. It really is about a simple, ordinary life. You follow this farm boy, his experience in learning something outside of this farm that he has grown up on and see him get married have a lot of heartbreak in marriage and in his daughter who is born he and his wife have a very difficult relationship and do not get along very well it's quite toxic and controlling um, and he begins an affair with a woman at the university and for the first time he's truly so happy outside of what academia and discovering literature gave him and we see this really amazing relationship between him and this woman begin and they both have such a love of literature and writing and reading and they can really share this passion together um, but of course <laughs> the world is against them and uh, when it is discovered that they're having this affair he gets blackmailed essentially by um, certain staff members at the university leaving the bears and walking across the river into the old town now we see flags lining the streets uh, the Swiss flag is a white cross on a red background. You can quickly see the flag of Bern in the background, which is a black bear on a red and white background. Uh, we see the Zeitglocke or tower clock, which is a big tourist attraction. Uh, when it chimes on the hour, a parade of mechanical bears, a jester, and even a rooster make an appearance. If you are Swiss or have visited Switzerland, you'll recognize Migros, which is one of the two very popular supermarket chains. We walked through the end of the flower market to the parliament building, which you can see behind the bus here. A rainbow attached to the statue's ankle for Pride Month, and the dogs were absolutely exhausted by this time, so we took a quick rest in the park. Luna naturally tied herself up around her own leash, but don't worry, she quickly freed herself, just being her happy, carefree self. This is the first time I noticed this little free library in the corner, so I will definitely have to come back to donate a few red books and perhaps practice my German by picking up a German novel. Overall, Stoner is kind of a sad story um, of heartbreak and loss and just, I don't know, just not being able to fulfill all of your dreams because of war, because of money issues, because of all of these things that stop people from being able to live their lives as they would like. But it's also so relatable because it is just an ordinary life. Just somebody who wants to learn and wants to form true relationships, but sometimes it doesn't work out. And that's, I think, why it stuck so well with me. Lastly, we ended back at the train station uh, the trains are incredibly clean and punctual in Switzerland. It is a great way to get around. If you visit, I recommend buying a short-term train pass in advance. In this last clip, the wind was really beginning to pick up, so you can't hear anything I'm saying. I'll paraphrase it for you here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about Switzerland, specifically the canton of Bern, the city of Bern. Uh, let me know if you have read Stoner, if you have it on your to be list, or if you've even heard of it. Uh, thank you so much for watching and see you soon.